Have you ever wanted to grace the cover of a magazine? Um, yeah, I have. Well, there Not you go. Lie. <laughs> have you ever wanted to grace the cover of a magazine? Now you can. Ooh. With the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Awesome. Beauty. I hope. Beautiful. Go down uh, a ways down the page. This is GIMP.org. Downloads for Unix, Windows, Mac OS X. It's free. Awesome. Go grab it. Okay. A magazine cover is generally going to be eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches high. True. Right? Very true. It's a, pa- a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. So what we want to do is we want to crop out this image in such a way that it's going to work within that proportion. So I've created a marquee using the square marquee, the rectangular select tool. And you can resize that, move it around. And we want it to fit within the proportions of eight and a half by 11. So I'd say that's pretty close. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go image, crop to selection, and then I'm going to go image, scale image, and let's see how much this is actually in pixel or in inches. Pardon me. So 30 by 38. So now let's. This is for print, remember. So let's do 300 hmm. uh, DPI, pixels per inch, or dots per inch. At 300, that's your 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 normal quality for print. That's really generally what you want to be using. Now, in this case, our camera doesn't quite get us there to 300 DPI. The way that I can see that is that when I set it to 300, it's not 8.5 by 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly click the down arrow here, and I'm going to bring this down until either the width reaches 8.5 or the height reaches 11. And you'll see this is set to inches. Okay, So I'm going down. Those are proportional. That's what this guy does. And decreasing the resolution until we get eight. And, there's eight and a half, and now we need to reach 11. There we go. Okay, so that's perfect. So we've got 8.643 by 11. Our resolution is 252, and we're going to change our interpolation to sync. That's going to just resize the image. We won't notice a difference because really the image is the same size. A little bit different but the resolution is is ready for print. So now I'm going to switch back to what I've done is image canvas size. Okay. Now we're not doing image size. We're not resizing the image. We're resizing just the size of the image, not actually shrinking it down or we're only going to we're going to crop basically. Mm-hmm. We're going to change the size of the the canvas, okay? So I'm going to unselect this chain link, which makes it so that it's proportional, because then if I change this to 8.5, then my 11 all of a sudden becomes 10. So that's no good. So what I want to do is I want to unlink that, and I want to go 8.5 by 11, okay? And then I hit center so that it centers the image within that 8.5 by 11. I go resize, and it's actually just cropped in those edges ever so slightly. You can see here, it's like it's just a couple of pixels on the edge, okay? Next up, what we're going to need is you're going to need a logo for your, your magazine. In our case, we've, we've got it made because uh, Krista made us a, a wonderful logo for uh, for the show. So I'm going to grab that off of our, uh, our trusty that network. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to use the word mark here. So here we go. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to open it with the GIMP. Now observe... The width of this image is, because it's a very high resolution, it's six, uh, 7,629 wide. Mm. Okay, So it's much wider than our image, which is 2142. So let's actually resize this logo. Remember, don't ever save over top of your master. What did I say that was? 2142. So this one, I want to make it a little bit less than that. So this is proportional. 2142. Two one. Th- let's do three zero. Okay, just so it's a little bit smaller than the actual size. Remember that it's sync. It's going to give us better interpolation, better quality. Okay. Now I Control A to highlight all. Control C to put it in my clipboard, and then go back to this canvas. Control V. Ooh. And now it's part of that image, but I want to right click and go. That's weird how it centers. Layer. New layer. Now. In our layers pane, we have these two layers. Mm. 
One of them is our background, one of them is our word mark. Let's select our word mark. I'm going to go to the move uh, layer right here, move tool. I'm going to single click outside of the layer and then use the shift up arrow to move it up. Okay, And I'm going to put it right about there. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to turn off that layer. So now it looks like that. I'm going to select my background layer and I'm going to grab this lasso tool. Okay. We're going to zoom in on our image. I'm not going to do this using the computer zoom, uh, the screen zoom. Instead, I'm going to actually hit shift plus. I'm zooming way in on our image so that we get right in there. So you can see all my acne. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, now I'm going to enable the logo, and I see that it comes down to about here on my head. So I'm going to disable it. I'm going to start just below where the logo begins, and I've single clicked. Now you see that marquee? It's created a line. I'm going to click, click, click on the shape of my head, and it's creating a nice marquee around my head. The thing that brought this up, as, you, as you'll see, is that we actually have some desktop wallpaper available that looks similar to a magazine cover. And viewers have been emailing and saying, hey, how do, we, how do we actually do that? Can you do a tutorial? So here we go. So you see what I'm doing is I'm click, 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 so that I get this nice marquee, basically clicking there. Click there. Click there. Click there. Click there. Let's turn back on our logo. We don't need to go any further down. I'm going to grab this and go across to Hillary, where we're going to touch your hair there. Oh, you've got a stray one right there, just oh, so you know. So Maybe you could just fix that one. Oh, yeah. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh. Okay, now I'm not going to get too precise with the hair, because we don't need to be that incredibly precise with it. Not with those flyaways, we don't. Not with those little ones, yeah. <laughs> you got. I, I have a few of those too, you just couldn't see them. Yeah, it's true. Okay. So see what I'm doing is I'm kind of going around it and making some little points and stuff to make it so that it looks like uh, I've traced around your hair nice. Okay. Turn back on the logo, see where it is. See, I'm still in the logo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keep going. Keep going. There we go. I think we're probably out of the word mark now, outside of our logo. So let's turn it back on. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to go minus. Okay. Be careful that you don't click somewhere where you're going to lose your marquee that you just created. I'm going to go see where the, the word mark is. I'm going to click outside of that. I'm clicking on that, 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 and then I'm going to wrap it up at the side of my head. Now we've got this perfect marquee mm -hmm. that's going just around our heads. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the pasted layer, which is our logo. We're going to right click and we're going to go add layer mask. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for those of you who aren't in HD tonight. Add layer mask. I'm doing this to the word mark layer, our logo. Okay, And it gives you some options as to how do you want to apply that layer mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to say selection, because that's what we've done. And we're going to go add and watch what happens here instantaneously. It's created a mask, which is that shape around our logo. And so it looks like that. And now if I use the select tool to deselect, we've got that look uh, that you see on the oh, magazine cool. covers, right? So yeah, you're yeah. actually falling. The, the words are actually behind oh, our heads yeah. as far as that goes. Okay. We can experiment a little bit with uh, the opacity of that layer. You can choose some different, you can maybe screen it or, you know, there may be an option that works better depending on your back background. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the layer mode. Depending on the background that, uh, that you have behind you, those will work either better or not so good. Grain merge to me looks pretty good because see what you get is you can actually see the drapes through the word mark and it looks a little bit like they're actually a part of yeah. the drapes. Okay. So there's the first bit of our magazine cover. Okay. Let's switch our logo back to normal. I want it to be pretty vibrant. I think it's, even though I think that looks cool, I think for a magazine we need it to be nice and bright. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sample the color 
of our word mark, which is that Doppler tool right there, color picker. I'm going to grab that green, and now you'll see that. Let's see. I'm going to. I have to select my logo layer first. Click the green, and you'll see that my foreground color is now that green. Okay. Change which layer I'm working with, and create a black layer. I'm going to add some text. What should we say here? I can actually drag the text area here. Robbie Ferguson and Hillary Rumble describe how easy it is to create <laughs> magazine covers in the free GNU image manipulation program. There you go. You don't have to use my wording exactly. You know, whatever you come up with. Increase my font size, see, because over here, remember we're working in very high resolution, so I'm going to bring that way up. You see that text is starting to grow into that image there. There it is. Okay, see that? So now we're going to do what, the, what they do in the magazines. We're going to wrap around that. We're going to create a new layer. Now see, I've just created a marquee. Mm -hmm. Our marquee is going to be transparent. This is a new layer that's transparent, but I've already got a square there. I'm going to fill it with my background color, which, as we know, is the perfect match for the green in our logo. Yes. Reorder those two layers. And now I've got that text cool. right on top of that uh, green area. So drag that down a little bit. Oh. My zoom wants to center everything I do. There we go. Use your arrows to nudge when you have the uh, move tool selected. Use shift nudge to uh, move it really, really quickly. And you can see that we're starting to get a real nice look to our magazine cover. Any questions so, <coughs> pardon me, so far in the chat room? Nothing Not yet, at all? Just a lot of discussion. Cool, cool. All right, now I want to move that down, but I, don't, I want to move the text at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to link these layers. So I've cl clicked on the chain link here, the chain link here. So that's my text layer and my green bar layer. And now when I move that green bar, it's actually going to move the text at the same time. So oh. I can put that wherever I'd like to go. Okay. So we can do stuff like that. No problem. Now I'm going to grab a new color. It's going to be white. We're going to create new text. We'll put this down on the table. Don't miss this week's episode, or let's go, don't mess, episode 204, timely, see? 205 is next week's, right? No, 204, because oh, that's where we're actually doing the tutorial. So if anyone ever sees this graphic, they'll say, hmm, I can learn how to do this because it's oh, right there. Clever. There you go. And learn how it's done with free tools. Okay, shrink that font down a little bit. There we go. Nudge. And there we are. Real quickly. Square marquee. I'm going to go in about there. Okay? So I've got this marquee that is basically the center area of our image. I'm going to right click, go select. Feather. This is a huge image. So let's feather it about... Uh, 500 pixels, okay? Because it's proportional. We're feathering out. It's it's 2,100 pixels wide, so that gives us a nice feathered edge. Now, right-click, select, invert. So now it's the edge. It's a frame that's that's now selected. Highlight your background layer. So that's the image. Create a new layer. Layer, new layer. Transparent. Select a color and make it black. And now go edit. Fill with your foreground color, which is the black. <gasps> Okay? Oh. And now we start to see this kind of effect. So we're really coming out of the page now. Bring down the opacity of that layer a little bit. We don't mm -hmm. want it to be stark black. Yeah. But now, see what this see this what this is doing? This is called a vignette. Ooh. And this has given us that real professional edge, that real professional touch to that image and boom. Beauty. Okay? Real quick, free tools, absolutely free. Go download it. gimp.org, Windows, Mac, Linux. It's Easy. free. You have no excuse, sir or madam. None. None. Nothing. Go get it. Your kids will love it. <laughs> it's back to school time.
They need free, free. software, Take what you can get. image manipulation software, mm -hmm. because kids love to be on magazine covers. I know I do. Yep. <laughs>